How's it everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys have not already. Also do me the biggest favor of all. Hit the bell notification button so you guys do not miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. If you guys would also please head over to Twitch. Follow me there at Douglas447. I stream there at least once a week whether it's Call of Duty, Battlefield, Halo, Destiny 2. And of course if you guys have any movie shows or games you guys want me to cover here on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. And we're going to be diving in positives and negatives, talking about all six episodes of the recent MCU show, Moon Knight, here in 2022 on Disney+. Plus. Of course, um, eventually in a few weeks, you can purchase this from, from third-party retailers, and you can acquire this on DVD and Blu-ray uh, if you guys don't want Disney+. Plus, so... There will be that option in case you guys are wanting to wait and watch it then. And I encourage you guys to do so because this is by far the best MCU show that they have produced. Now, what I mean by MCU show, I'm talking about MCU canon because unfortunately things like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist... Uh, Luke Cage, The Defenders, those shows unfortunately are no longer canon. So when I'm talking about MCU, I'm talking like WandaVision, Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, Hawkeye. Um, but this is the best one. And I wasn't really excited for this show, but when I watched the first episode, I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. The first episode really does a great job of intriguing you enough that you're like okay you don't know what's going on and because of that factor you kind of want to keep watching just to see what's going to happen and the first episode does a great job of balancing what we know from the mcu as great action great dialogue great characters great humor and then it tosses something in to the mcu that we really haven't seen done yet and I'm sure with Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, it's going to get taken to another level. But Moon Knight introduces horror-like aspects into the MCU that we really haven't seen done in a proper way. Like, we've had small little bite sizes of horror in the MCU, but nothing as horror-like when it comes to Moon Knight. <laughs> And I'm just really excited and happy that this show was made in the way that it was. Every single episode was a knockout. Yeah, there was one that I really didn't too much care for because I felt like it was just a lot of exposition dumping at times. But still, I had a blast watching this show from start to finish. Um, for those of you who haven't watched the show yet, the show follows Stephen Grant, played by the amazing actor of Oscar Isaac from the X-Men Apocalypse movie and, of course, from Star Wars. And Stephen Grant is this gifted shop employee and he discovers that he has identity disorder and he shares his body with this mummy-like mercenary Mark Spector and he's also the avatar for an Egyptian god. And it's a really cool plot and it because of the identity disorder it allows Oscar Isaac as an actor to be able to flex his acting acting skills and we get to have an MCU because of that where we have a hero and a villain that takes its time to unravel their characters it takes its time to unravel mysteries it takes its time to grow its characters without even having to have any connections to any of the MCU projects. Like, if you have watched the show, or you plan to, while you're watching the show, you're watching a self-contained show. Like, this does take place after Avengers Endgame. And it is part of the MCU. However, there's not a single thing that connects it to the MCU, which is kind of weird. <laughs> You know it's part of the MCU just because of it being Moon Knight. But it doesn't have a single cameo. It doesn't have a reference or anything like that. It's just like, okay, we're going to make a Moon Knight show. Yeah, he's a Marvel character. But we're not going to try to shoehorn in all these connections and cameos and Easter eggs and references. We're just going to make a show 
for the sake of making a good show. And for that, I'm happy for. Fantastic practical effects, the CGI and the soundtrack, all amazing. Oscar Isaac, of course, is awesome. Ethan Hawke is the main protagonist in the show. It's an amazing performance. Um, episodes 1, the elevator scene, is super memorable. I really enjoyed that. I also want to talk about, briefly, and I'll talk about her again. Unfortunately, I don't remember her name. <laughs> That's how kind of insignificant she is as a character. Is Mark's wife. She is super well-developed, she's kick-ass, and she's super resourceful. And I'm just happy that they didn't make her, like, this damsel in distress character that Mark Spector was going to have to constantly rescue throughout the show. Like, you get to see her backstory briefly. Like, we could use more, obviously. But you understand her backstory well enough for the show's purpose. And I'm just happy that she's not like, oh, I need to be saved because I did something really stupid because of the writing. It's like they write her as an actual character that can hold her own and that actually has thought processes and actually makes smart decisions for the most part. There's <laughs> like one time she doesn't <laughs> because action thing needs to happen. But other than that, I felt like she was a great addition and I'm happy that she was not a damsel in distress. Um, I love the fact that we get to see some Egyptian monsters and the fact that Mark slash Stephen can only see them while normal people that aren't avatars or part of the Egyptian, you know, world can't see them. And I like that concept. The uh, fighting sequences in episode three, fantastic. In episode four, we get a, we get to see a small civil war that's been going on between the gods for a very long time. And... I kind of wish that got explored a little more. Like, we get a little teaser of it. I just kind of wish we got a little more of that Egyptian God Civil War. And if we do get a season two of Moon Knight, which I have a gut feeling we probably won't, um, just because of how season one kind of wraps up, um, I would, I'd like to see more of that concept explored in the future. I hope Moon Knight actually does show up in a live-action MCU movie that you can see in the theaters. That's how much I like this show and I like this character. Um, also, episode 4 has a mummy that guards the tomb. And I thought it was really creepy. It's kind of slightly bloody and 100% disturbing. And when you're watching episode 4, it's like, okay, did we go from a MCU horror action movie to literally MCU's version of the mummy because that's what it felt like <laughs> and it's not so much that that's a bad thing it's just like i was really shocked and surprised that they had the audacity to go that far into disturbing territory um i also felt that the revelation that mark um um that mark having a brother and that mark's uh Mark's mother and her traumatization of Mark and M Mark's mother meeting him is what kind of caused the identity disorder and it led to the formation of Stephen Grant. I felt like that revelation was kind of not as impactful as I had hoped. Like, I really felt like it was just a little more meaty. Like, it's just like, oh, it happens. And I'm just like okay it just didn't impact me the same way as i think they expected it to like it was a good like oh that was interesting but it was not like oh wow i'm so shocked <laughs> um and then of course in episode four at the very end mark does die um and then episode five deals with the afterlife and death and memories and we get to talk to a talking hippo god <laughs> oh the talking hippo is hilarious um, and we get, of course, more about Mark and his brother and how Mark's brother drowned at a young age and more, more memory stuff, more things of that nature. And then, of course, the, the final episode, episode six, amazingly, they were able to still keep the humor while the action is going on for the season finale. And lastly, I want to talk about is that. Mark's wife, I was happy, like I said, happy that she's not a damsel in distress, but she's 
not a, she's like that throughout the entire show. And she ends up choosing to become an avatar for the hippo god only to help her husband in the final battle. And I'm happy that she was like, okay, I'm going to be your avatar to help my husband to defeat the big bad guy. But after that, we're done. We're parting ways. This is a temporary thing. And I'm just like, good. She's not going to be a Mary Sue. She's not sticking with this power just because she has it. And she's not going to be like, look at me, I'm super powerful. And she never overpowers her husband. Like, when they're both fighting together against Ethan Hawke's villainous character, they're both pretty much on the same power level. Like, obviously, Moon Knight's more powerful, I hope. They don't make it where, like, in the Hawkeye show, Kate Bishop takes over Hawkeye. Like, Kate Bishop is not supposed to be more powerful than Hawkeye. Hawkeye should always be more powerful than Kate Bishop. In the Hawkeye show, though, they do the opposite. Here in Moon Knight, Moon Knight is Moon Knight, and Moon Knight is the more powerful one. Now, Mark's wife being an avatar and helping in the final battle does help. She does help out. And having that extra power boost to defeat the bad guy was essential and very helpful. But she's not like, I'm going to be the one that defeats him and yada, yada, yada. It's like, okay, thank you for just being a side character, doing what you're supposed to do in a show that's not about you. And I'm happy about that. And, of course, at the very end of Episode 6, there is a post credit scene. I encourage you guys to watch it. It is very crucial, very important. I don't want to spoil it in case you guys have not seen it. But make sure you guys do watch the post credit scene. And, strangely, though, I do want to say this kind of slightly spoilery. I felt like the final episode, at least with the post credit scene, would have done something to tie in with Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness since it's coming out the day after Moon Knight's uh, season finale. Um, but it doesn't. It just is a little extra icing on the cake that helps wrap up things with season one. And that's all I'm going to say. So with that, guys, I'm going to give Moon Knight here from 2022 a 10 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Look forward to more videos coming out very soon. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.